Hi everyone, my name is Leonardo Machado and I'm an Applications Engineer at Malexis. I will talk to you about a feature of our magnetic position sensors called backend calibration. We at Malexis guarantee that our sensors can deliver a linear output with the smallest error possible, but mechanical tolerances in the application level, such as the imperfect alignment of magnet and sensor, may introduce a nonlinearity to the signal. That's why we offer the backend calibration because it allows you to compensate for that nonlinearity and achieve the desired linear output. This means you can spend less time and less money on your magnet or assembly process and still remain within your error budget. But how does it work? The calibration consists of defining the transfer curve and storing it in the sensor's non-volatile memory. This curve will be used to compensate for the nonlinearity and the goal is to make the residual nonlinearity as small as possible. We offer different methods to define this curve. The four-point calibration method allows you to define the transfer curve by programming four points in arbitrary positions and five slopes. The ability to program the points in arbitrary positions makes it possible for you to achieve a better linearization by placing points where the nonlinearity is the highest. The eight-point calibration is similar allowing you to program up to eight points, also in arbitrary positions. The 16-point method lets you enter as many calibration points as you want, and based on the interpolation of those points, 17 points are calculated and stored in the memory. The calculated points are equidistantly spread over the angular working range of the sensor. The 32-point method also enables you to enter as many calibration points as you want, but on top of the interpolation of the points, there is also the calculation of an optimized slope, and then only the differences between the interpolated points and the slope are stored in the memory. This is done for 33 points that are equidistantly spread over the angular working range of the sensor. You can see that as the number of points for each method increases, the residual nonlinearity decreases. Now let's take a look at some examples. A very common example is the butterfly valve application. There's a magnet mounted on the valve, and as it rotates, the output of the sensor underneath it will vary linearly with the position of the magnet. However, the output obtained can be influenced by many factors such as the magnet not being perfectly magnetized, the magnet rotating off-axis, the sensor not being perfectly aligned with the magnet, or the sensor being tilted with respect to the magnet. The resultant nonlinearity is a combination of all these factors. Luckily, you can compensate for this by using one of the previously mentioned methods and achieve the desired linear output. There are also cases in which the output of the sensor is intrinsically nonlinear, such as in linear movement applications. In these cases, for a limited range of movement, you can use the four point method and achieve a fairly linear output. As the desired range of movement increases, you can move up in the number of calibration points using the 8, 16, or 32 point method. Finally, the backend calibration can also be used to program an output behavior that is different from just a single straight line. For example, using the four-point method, you can program this type of repetitive signal. This can be used in ride height applications and allows the module to be mounted with different orientations while still providing the same type of output. For more information, visit our Malexis website and don't forget to check out our other videos. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.